In this video, we'll draw some more shapes and learn how to perfectly extend them, divide them, and use them for measuring things. Make sure you spend one hour a day practicing the things you learn here until you can do them all. So by now, you can hopefully draw squares and rectangles, and while we could measure our squares or use a ruler, you should be trying to get good at instinctively producing squares which are fairly close to perfect. This is an important point to make. They do not have to be perfect. When we draw squares, there is a tolerance. A slightly wonky or imperfect square is okay, and when you do this in perspective, you'll be able to get away with it even more. So you don't have to be exact here. There is of course a point where you might need to tighten up your efforts, but anything around say 95% accurate should be good enough. Squares are such an important thing to be able to draw because squares allow us to create grids and grids allow us to measure things. They also allow us to draw boxes, which are about the most important thing to be able to draw, as you'll see from taking this course. Although I love drawing, I'd like to take a moment to tell you about another really useful hobby I have, which is origami. I actually learned a lot about perspective drawing from origami, and so I suggest grabbing a square piece of paper and following along. Post-it notes work well, but it does need to be perfectly square for this, so grab something and let's get going. Put your square on the table and try to find the middle point of it, the dead center. You're probably fairly close, but how do you know you're exactly on dead center? Well, you could measure it with a ruler, but there's actually an easier way to find this spot perfectly without any tools, and it's simply to bisect the square diagonally in both directions, like this. The point where the folds intersect is the exact middle. Now, draw a square and fire lines through it diagonally. You just found the middle of your drawn square. To demo why this is so powerful, I'm going to draw some boxes in perspective, and you can see that by following this principle, no matter how the boxes are angled or what dimensions they have, this principle works. We can find the center on each face of an oddly rotated cuboid, as well as a perfect cube. And this is super important because it unlocks our next ability, extending squares. If we take a drawn square with some extended edges and find the center, we can use this to clone the square further along the extension. This is why finding the center is important. What about if we wanted to find the halfway point along the edge of our square or rectangle? Well, when we take a paper square, we can fold it in half to mark the center, but drawing does not allow for folding. So we have to draw our diagonals first to find the center and then use that to find the midpoint on any edge. This involves a little bit of guesswork, but remember, we do not need to be super accurate. Once we mark the center, we guess roughly where the midpoint is on one edge, and we fire it through to the opposite side to find the midpoint on the opposite edge. Now pay attention, because this is where it gets a little bit trickier. If we fire a line from the bottom left corner through the top middle and keep going until we hit the other side, we find the corner of the next square. If we do the same on the opposite side, then we can connect both marks to make two cloned squares. Because this also works on any box at any angle in any perspective, you can now make grids and extended boxes and boxes of any size you want. We can fold a square piece of paper into quarters and similarly we can divide a drawn square into quarters once we know where the center point is. We can then divide each quarter into quarters. This allows us to cut squares into things like L shapes, but also to measure things. Remember, this stuff I'm showing you not only works for squares, but for any rectangle. That means if we can draw a rectangle around a subject, then we can divide this rectangle up and extend it to map points on the subject. And this is how we plan drawing things in perspective. It's always easiest to draw in flat view when we do this, something called orthographic or orthogonal view, but it just means flat. All measurements will be accurate, whereas perspective distorts things and makes them impossible to measure, unless we use this subdivision method. This is the key to how people are able to draw things like cars and props and even characters at any angle. They either plan the measurements like this first, or they're just so experienced that they can work this out just by looking at the subject. If you've ever tried something like life drawing, you've probably used these exact same ideas to map something from the world around you to the easel, and that's all totally valid here as well. Now, I know this is an additional step and that measuring is not drawing. But honestly, this is a fast and rapid way to construct things once you get proficient at it. And really, it just takes practice. So let's do that. Can you make a grid of squares? How about a grid of rectangles? Can you divide a rectangle up into quarters and eighths and sixteenths? 
You will remember I said at the start of the video that accuracy is not essential, and always remember that this is the case when we do this. If I want to turn this square into thirds, there are ways to measure it and make it perfect, just like I can do in origami, but I could just very quickly visually do it, and while it's not going to be 100% accurate, I'll settle for 95%. It's not like anyone's going to check anyway. So to recap, you learned that squares and rectangles can be divided by finding the center point and slicing them up with lines, that we can use these lines as guides to extend the shape in any direction, and that we can use this to create grids or shapes designed to help us measure things in orthographic views, and we can divide these shapes up or extend them further to find other measurements we care about. Make sure you can do the following before moving on to the next video. To make this easier, in case you are finding it tricky, just stick to simple squares and try and extend them to make simple lines of two or three squares. I found that folding real paper was the best way to learn how the extending logic works in real life, but you cannot fold a drawn square, and so firing lines and making marks is essential to drawing like this. Draw faintly, and then darken the lines you care about. You have been practicing drawing straight lines, haven't you? To make the challenge harder, see what you can draw from a side or plan view now. Can you extend or divide squares and rectangles to draw the building you live in? Can you draw a car, a spaceship, a horse? If you treat a square as a one-by-one one grid unit, you can map anything by extending the squares. Can you take a photo of something and map it using these techniques to break it down into measured pieces? Keep these safe, because you can use them for future experiments in this video series. Once you feel comfortable playing with these things and you can produce them as flat orthographic drawings, we'll jump into the world of perspective and begin looking at how we can make these 2D things we have drawn three-dimensional. Don't move on until you are confident though. If you don't understand what's going on here, spend a few days just repeating it, then continue. Rushing through this is the most common way to fail at it, so be patient and take your time. 